Hi, happy Sunday. It's Sunday, right? Cake, <laughs> right? Let's try this one again. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I've got one computer here that I think is using like one megabyte of RAM. No big deal because it's my work computer and it's month end, quarter end, and, and then working on email over here and pretty much sitting here in this chair ready to work and sleep for four or five days in a row. I'm like, I'm going to be not moving from this chair for a small while. So, uh, yeah, sorry, super scattered. It's just been one heck of a uh, heck of a day. I hope everyone else has had a great day so far. Great weekend. Happy start to October. Thank you again for all the questions from everybody. Uh, it's really exciting to just keep adding more um, to the grab bag and just answer your questions. And I hope they provide some uh, exciting feedback. Last week's was awesome. I really liked that. And I liked um, even like even just kind of listening to it again when I was using that new software I was talking about. Um, especially the question of uh, the lateral violence in the workplace was super cool. I loved it. So um, thank you for all these creative questions. If, uh, if you could wake up tomorrow having gained one quality or ability, what would it be? Um, if this was asking me in a past life, it would have been to be happy with myself. But now, today, if I could wake up... Well, now this is almost like a superpower. Um, I didn't gain one. Uh, you know what? Let's let's just make it real. Financial management. I just, I don't have the money for a microphone, but I just bought a microphone earlier today. Um, anecdotally, it's, it's funny. <laughs> um, uh, in case next week, for example, um, things sound a little bit different. I ordered a new mic, uh, and by new mic, I mean the first like desktop style mic. Um, I've been fine with just using what's in my headphones, but the, like, it's, I know that the embedded mic in here is really for like taking phone calls, not for stuff like speaking or podcast or recording or anything like that. And it really became evident to me when I was doing a little bit of karaoke yesterday and I, and I even though I was muddling around with karaoke previously, um, I just was okay with it. But this time around, I just was not happy with how it sounded. And, uh, yeah, this morning I woke up and... I'm like, fuck it, I'm buying a mic. Don't have the money for that, but I bought it anyway. So if I could wake up tomorrow having gained one ability or quality, what would it be? Better financial management. Which, kind of a lame power, right? But I'm not interpreting this as a, as, as a superhero-based question. Um, if we wanted to answer that in the sense of um, like superpowers or whatever, um, it would be easily the same thing as Scarlet Witch. Right, just like the witchcraft slash uh, telekinesis and then some, yeah, no, like such an innovative character who can pretty much do anything and can't be stopped. Um, love it, absolutely love it. Um, that's an exciting question, right? Because like I said, that I can answer that in a bunch of different stages of life. What's your favorite color and number? Um, my, when I was growing up, I liked the number seven. Um, number 11 means a lot to me now. And uh, for a lot of reasons, it, uh, it meant a lot to me because of a uh, person very important to me. It kind of fell into something I enjoyed as well. Uh, and then even other little notes where um, I have a custom Winnipeg Jets jersey with uh, Rick, Rick Rippian on it. Um, and Rip wore 11. Um, Rip ended up taking his, uh, uh, his life shortly before the... Winnipeg Jets 2.0 season started uh, and he was suffering with depression and uh, so Project 11 resonates with me. Um, my absolute favorite center fielder of all time, right, because obviously I love ball, I love softball, and I love baseball, um, and you know, being a Blue Jays fan, Kevin Pillar wore number 11 and uh, so that meant a lot to me. So that's two, like even when it comes to the world of sports, where 11, 11 sits with me. So if you, um, if you ever see me doing any donations or campaigning or whatever, I like, I like to use the number 11 as to be bases of multiples and whatever. Um, it just, it, it works. I like it. And then, you know, there's Wish on a Clock 1111 and, and whatnot. Um, there's a song I really enjoyed called 1111. Um, so yeah. Favorite color? Um, I, I, Purple? <laughs> um, I like purple. Um, it just seems nice. Green speaks to me, but largely because of my eyes. Um, I always get complimented on my eyes, and so just by the nature of that, I, I like green because it's nice eyes. <laughs> and uh, otherwise, don't really have a lot of colors that I have as a favorite, 
um, I can work with a lot. Honestly, like one of my absolute favorite sets of nails that I had um, way back when was black and silver. So, and like, I, I love them. I literally got them again after it was time to get my nails done. So that speaks. Um, if not a favorite color, but a color that absolutely sticks with me, that I always think of as an abstract color is puce, however. When I was in elementary school, I don't remember what book it was that we were reading. It must have been in grade four or something like that. But in the, um, in the story, something came up about puce and what the color puce was made of. And obviously it kind of sat with me ever since. I think it was like, like, I don't, obviously I don't remember now. I shouldn't say obviously, I should know. What the fuck is puce? It's like blue and orange mixed together or something along those lines. It's not beautiful, I know that. It looks exactly what it sounds like. Yeah, of course, picture of a bug. <laughs> Brownish purple, reddish dark brown, dark red, purple brown. Um, makes for a good adjective. I'm gonna remember that now. Um, favorite color of Mary Antoinette. That's an interesting factoid. Okay, well, whatever. It's based on red. I'm trying to remember how blue and orange got together. Whatever, nobody cares anymore. So, puce is one I'll always remember, but it certainly doesn't come front to fun, but now knowing, seeing actually. Maybe I'll wear a puce dress for the Christmas party. <laughs> if you're stressed, what helps you wind down? Um, I love that question. Thank you for asking. Definitely not coffee, even though I'm drinking coffee all the time. Um, and even when it comes to stress, a lot of times if I feel I'm stressed, it's because I feel overworked. Or if not overworked, but I feel like there are lots of things to do and not enough time to do it. So more often than not, the first thing that helps me wind down is put into perspective of how overwhelming things feel versus how overwhelming things are. And I find that works really well for me. It can still get frustrating because thinking about it doesn't make the to-do list any shorter, but that doesn't mean that now I don't have more clarity or maybe a little, another refocus on the most important things to do. And sometimes it even just gives me an opportunity to, uh, if not reset, but just take myself away from a certain project and, and work on something else. I can still be productive. I actually get really anxious when I'm not doing anything because I feel like I've got stuff to do. Lots of it, even when it comes to entertainment. I just started a new round of Dark Souls 3. I really want to be playing it, but I've got a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> um, and it's kind of anxious. I'm like, ah, oh, I want to get through. I want to, you know, I want to play. <laughs> but, you know, it's like, no, you have things to get done. And that all just starts with, with, with stopping myself and just doing a quick check of what is the task list. I'm actually, um, I keep a list with me regularly of things to get done or to-dos, um, so that helps keep me organized. Um, and I find it helps a ton, honestly, even for the most basic things. Um, my computer's melting all the time with how many tabs and whatever I have open, but there's one tab that's really RAM heavy that was a, uh, a task tracker. I, I love it because it keeps me focused on these are the things that need to get done, even if they're just the most sharpened kitchen knives, whatever, right? And it's just easy to know that it's a to-do. When it comes to the winding down part, I still like to get things done. As I just mentioned, I get anxious when I'm not being productive, so I just want to recollect and then reprioritize if necessary, or just push back for a moment, call it a night. Um, that's, that's easy for me. <laughs> well, we were just talking about money. How much debt do you have? Is it something that concerns you enough? And no, um, I'm, my net worth starts with a negative number, but I'm okay with that. Because our, our society is focused on money. And in my lifetime, that's not changing anytime soon anyway. I'm pretty sure I talked about debt in the past regardless. But when it comes to the debt, when it comes to money, that the value and the comfort of having money grows exponentially the more that you have. Just, it's math, literally. <laughs> and the challenge is that with not having lots of money, I'm still way behind, according to the charts. So I'm at peace with that. I'm the farthest thing from struggling. Um, as I mentioned right out of the gate, I bought a microphone that I probably shouldn't have bought, but I bought it. <laughs> so I'm not in a position where I'm deciding if I'm eating or buying dumb trinkets, but I'm definitely not in a position to buy a dumb trinket because it's free money that I, I put my money into my savings and my RSPs and my investments and you know everything else that goes along with it. So uh, I do have that um, little cloud, I guess we want to say. 
um, but it doesn't concern me. And also, I, I, I don't want to think about retirement because as a trans woman, I don't really even know if I'm going to make it to retirement. And that's not from my own decision making. Let's put it that way. Right? So throwing tens of thousands of dollars in a piggy bank for it to go to my estate, would I be happy to be out of debt? Yes. Am I working towards it? Yes. I'm actually very happy with the calendar that I created to help me be more mindful about my expenses uh, and where I am financially. And even to the point when it comes to my financial situation, I have more than enough opportunity to help people when they ask. Um, I've been helping carry someone really, really important to me lately. I wouldn't think twice. I, 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 I've said it in, you know, when we were having a discussion about it, where it's like, I, if, if, if we were beside each other, right, if we were under the same roof, I would be doing the exact same thing. Why would I go ahead and watch somebody else struggle? I've been in a very similar position before. So if I have an opportunity to help somebody free their head, sure, why not? It's easy for me. I wouldn't even think twice. So I'm not concerned about how much debt I have. I'm not taking on any new extravagant loans or anything. And I'm certainly not you know, reinvesting in, in something with capital. What I will say, when it comes to the trans side of things is a lot of that debt came from looking for happiness. All I wanted to do was fit in. I wanted to be comfortable. I wanted to be part of the crowd. Um, and oftentimes it means I would just be spending because I was being social and hopefully by being social, people would want to spend time with me. And so it was money well spent. Quick note, it doesn't work that way. A lot, so a lot of my money has to do with, with experiences. An ex actually pointed that out before in terms of my material goods or my assets versus life experience. Um, most of my spending has gone into life experience. Uh, and sometimes that just means playing on four or five softball teams in a year and playing playing every single weekend in a tournament and then, you know, anything that the clubhouse would be spending here, going out after a night after or whatever, it would just, it was just being part of a social experience um, and never even thinking twice. So that's a lot of where my money came from, or my, my debt came from. I can't be frustrated at it because I wouldn't be the person I am without the path that I've taken and there's never been a better version of me. I can't say I would do the exact same thing again, <laughs> but I can say that I have zero regrets. I love myself like nobody's business and that I, I wouldn't be where I am without taking that opportunity to reflect on my own life and learn from everything that I went through. <laughs> Do you have a lot of stuff? Do you keep a, lo a lot of things? I have a lot of stuff. I have a lot of stuff. Um, I, uh, so here's a really good example of having a lot of stuff. So I was out shopping yesterday and I ran to the thrift store to get two irons because earlier in the day, my iron that I've been using for years stopped working. Okay, right? It has to happen. And then there was another similar to an iron thing. It's like a steamer with a brush on it or whatever. I plugged it into the same outlet and shortly thereafter, that stopped working. I'm like, fuck, is the outlet broken? So I knew I needed an iron anyway because I took it and went to a couple other outlets. It's busted, so obviously a fuse inside the iron's toast and like whatever, I'll get a new iron, I don't care. So I go to the thrift store and I buy two irons. They were cheap. Right, six bucks each or whatever. Here I go with the money and just validating price, doesn't matter. But the logic behind that was I need an iron anyway, so I'll buy a cheap iron and another iron, which was the same price, but whatever. And in case that outlet is actually shorting out the iron, then at least I have another iron that isn't now broken, so then I can figure out the outlet. Okay, simple thinking in principle, but I totally totally forgot about the fact that in this drawer right beside me i have a tester that i could check to see if the outlet's working or not so that happens with a lot of the things that are around me i get whatever i need at the time without putting that little extra thought of hey i've already got the solution for this just take the extra two steps and figure it out 
Um, and then when it comes to keeping a lot of things, I'm not going to bother going back to the store to get a refund because it's the hassle. I don't want to stand in the line or whatever. It's six bucks. And then I go back to what's my worth, right? Based on what my income is and the time spent. And there's a study on this. It's actually really cool. I can't remember what the site is off the top of my head, but totally Google it. Check it out. You can find out what your value is. You can find out what you as a human being are worth per hour based on your income and some of the other things that you do. And I know for sure the time spent is going to cost me more than $6, right? So fuck it. I don't care. Um, I'm not throwing the iron out. It's in my shelf, right? Because if one day, someday the iron breaks or I just happen to know someone who, you know, hey, shit, I need an iron. I'm like, hey, I happen to have one. You may have it. Um, the amount of clothes I have is ridiculous. I told a friend of mine yesterday not counting bras as part of like some lingerie sets from a past life or uh, bikini tops and whatnot. I have like so sports bras and just like regular wear bras. Ones. I have 59, five, nine, five, nine bras, matching underwear. Who needs that many? But all I know is I don't need to do laundry often. That's a plus. The amount of clothes that I have when I was getting ready to come out, like go socially full time, I didn't. I wasn't at a point where I was super confident in myself and I wanted to make sure that my options had options. I wanted backups to my backups because I didn't want to be stuck with, okay, this is what you have to wear because this is what's available and feel uncomfortable about that. I wanted to make sure that if that thought ever showed up, I could be like, no, fuck, I'm going to wear that instead. I don't even feel that same thing if I'm going out, right? You know, feeling a little frumpy in this or I want to, you know, dress up a little more or whatever. I have a ridiculous amount of clothes, like literally. I can go for two months without doing laundry if I really wanted to. Don't. The point, right? Um, same thing with makeup and just name it. Name it. I, I, like my bedroom can be a store. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, when I shop, I shop in bulk. I'm literally looking at three things of mayonnaise because I don't know why I have three things of mayonnaise. I was panic shopping one day. Um, yeah, so that's kind of like the long and short of how I work. I don't let things go to waste. That's one thing that's really important. I don't let things go to waste. That's it. I don't keep a lot of things. If it's if it's pointless or useless, it's absolutely in the garbage. Otherwise, I just get around to selling it or making use of it or repurposing it or gifting it or whatever it be. But I've, um, I have a lot of things for somebody who sits in like three places max in my in my place. So, um, such as like, I just bought a microphone. I don't need a microphone, but guess who just bought a microphone? So let's add that to the pile. Um, when it comes to, uh, you know, pre-transition versus current life too, there's some stuff that I want to get rid of. I just literally need to get around and get into the drawer and chuck it, right? Like just sell nail polishes and just stuff that I had that was good enough at the time, but you know, my bars changed a little bit, so. That's a fun question. Honestly, if there's one thing though that I don't seem to ever have enough of, I know it's gonna sound so cliche, but uh, lightning cables like for my iPhone. I don't know how I don't have enough of them, but whatever. What's an area you want to improve in your life? Time management. Honestly, some of my favorite questions are the one that aren't like exclusively trans-based because I like, I like acknowledging and letting it be heard I'm a human being just like everyone else. Everyone else has pros and cons and wants and needs and goals and, and struggles. So I love these types of questions that are like, do you like cats or dogs? Yes. <laughs> Prefer a cat. Right? But, but like these are some of my favorite ones. However, I really love the opportunity to share some insight on the, the trans experience when, when it counts. So I, I, I find such a benefit in all these types of questions. But an area that I want to improve in my life is time management. It's funny that I am so certain that it was last week's episode that I mentioned that my the big the most difficult thing that I face every week is the clock. I'm so certain that that was last week. And so same thing where I know there are a lot of things that I can do if I just pushed myself away from the desk while something else was multitasking, for example. And um, because I, I like to accomplish things and sometimes I don't, right? Like while I'm waiting for this computer to update, for example, with a spreadsheet and so Excel is frozen for a question mark of time, but I know it's not one minute, it's gonna be a small while. 
Um, and my Mac is breathing heavy because it's got like 700 tabs open or whatever. So of course it's breathing heavy. So that's useless right now, but I'm still trying to work. And instead of getting anything done, I'll just sit and I'll play solitaire hoping for the best when I could be doing something like starting meal prep or take a moment of house cleaning or checking to see a text message or whatever. So, um, time management for me is important. And also when it comes to fitness, um, what I am wearing right now is with the entire intention of working out eventually, but for proper health, it's important to commit time to work out. That is something I struggle with because I find errands to take priority over personal health. Um, and that's not healthy. <laughs> I know there's an excellent skill in using your calendar and creating time, right? Like from 6 a.m. To, to 8 a.m. workout, right? And you can break it down. 6 to 6.30 is yoga. 6.30 to 7.15 is strength. And then 7.15 to 8 is cardio. My challenge is locking into those specific times. That's why my budget calendar, the one that I use, resonates with me where it's not necessarily about how you put $70 away for gas every two weeks or whatever it would be. I, I cover all of my known expenses and I put stuff that I know that I'm going to be paying for eventually automatically into savings. Like all of those things are pushed and already allocated. And then I'm left like just the way that my calculator is built. It leaves me a dollar amount. This is how much money you have until you need more money. And it works for me that way. That way I know, like I call it my life money. So I can look at it, right? Whether it's 42 cents or $142 or $1,142. That, that's the amount of money that I have at the lowest. And it's a fantastic system for me because then it allows me to just be like, can I buy a microphone? It's good, yes. <laughs> so as opposed to, well, I only put $25 in for my technology budget, so now I need to save that eight times or however much it cost. Um, same thing when it comes to time. I just get things done and create time as I feel I need to do it, and that is something that I feel I want to get better at. Um, because otherwise, as, as individually, of course there's little life skills that of course, we all want to benefit, right? You know, get better at or whatever. Uh, I'd like to learn how to be more concise, go figure. But that's low priority to me. I'd rather be doing push-ups than writing new paragraphs. What are your pet peeves that other people do around you? Okay, have bad handwriting. Um, pet peeves in a past life. I, I just, I couldn't stand the, all the macho talk, almost like, like it validated people to be able to speak with such poor language, thinking that it's like getting together with the guys or whatever. Ugh, I don't know. Um, how people would expect others to clean up after themselves in however you want to look at it. Whether it's people leaving trays behind at McDonald's to screwing something up at work and being like, well, it's the end of my shift. Well, whatever, that's life or not collaborating on a project and using your skills together. Self-centeredness. That's especially more so now, right? Like it's more evident than ever of, of, of how people, the, 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 the ability to think doesn't seem to go any farther than their nose. And to expect everyone past their nose to understand or be okay with it. That's nuts and I, that's just such a, a, a an overarching description, but honestly, I can't really think of a better way to put it because like whether it's a, a, a workplace partner, an intimate partner, a, a stranger or whatever, like roommate or a teammate, whatever, like it's entirely possible to be able to collaborate together and come to a solution that works for everybody. Um, and the inability or disinterest to do that is stunning. So that's um that 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 would absolutely stand stand front and center in terms of a social pet peeve of just the self centeredness. I just like, like okay, I don't know how you made it through life, but congratulations. So um, cause I love working with people. I love at least hearing them to get an understanding where they're coming from, what's important to them. Everybody has a reason for their behavior. Always more than willing to hear it. Doesn't necessarily mean it's always accepted, but 
I'm always more than interested to be like, all right, let's 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 see where you are and how can we work together on this? Everyone's world, like I said, is no farther than their own nose and total bliss about that. Go figure. I want to do one more. These seem fast. I want to do one more. Are you typically on time for things? I create time to be on time. Uh, if I'm going to be going somewhere where I plan on wearing makeup, for example, and just like dressing, you know, nicer, um, I hope I look fine today. <laughs> but like if I'm going out, for example, right, or if I'm going to be part of a conference call, or if I'm going to be on national TV or whatever, I create um, three or four hours of time to do that because I can do a bunch of other things after I get ready. Um, I do not like being late. I'm not always early, but I do not like being late. Um, I, I was saying to a friend the other day, um, we were talking about the airport. I am more than happy to show up at the airport and cross security with three hours to go. More than happy to do that because I would rather cross security and just sit on the other side and be bored as fuck than be super... Ah, what the hell? Oh, okay, speaking of buying things... <laughs> I need to... Actually, I just need to get some hot glue out. That's kind of funny. But we were talking about airport. And I'd rather be on the other side of the security, right, with time to go, than rush and find out that something was screwed up, right? You know, something was missing in the passport or whatever. So, um, yeah. No, I do not like rushing. Um, when it comes to softball, easy half an hour, 45 minutes early. That gives me lots of time to work out, stretch, right, warm up, just get ready for the game, kind of just get in the, in the moment. Um, yeah, that's how I go, right? So if, if you tell me a place and time, there's expect me there as uh, close to the start as possible. So, so, okay. Well, it looks like my, uh, clip isn't going to play nice. I'm not going to, I'm not going to ask it to go longer. That's, that's my penalty for saying that I wanted to do one more question. So I'm sorry, Mount, right? I'll fix you and hope you don't do it again. <laughs> um, thank you. Those are awesome. Man, those are just awesome to go through all these questions. I love it. And, uh, so please keep them coming. And what I'm going to be doing as well, I'm going to be sending an email out in the near future. It's, uh, part of the to-do list is um, going to be following up with some others. I have um, gotten access to a new part of the campaign where they're currently doing some troubleshooting with the SINs, which are still working fine, um, but I was identifying just a couple of issues that are happening with it. So in the meantime, during those, um, during the troubleshooting there, um, there's a function called letter, uh, letters <laughs> letters to the editor so I'm looking to build um, build that campaign that's going to be published and uh, going to be reaching out to a couple extra hands to uh, to pull that off You're more than welcome to help if you'd like right here's your invitation and so that'll be exciting so instead of going to political leaders and notable names it's going to be going to editors of publications in the target areas, right, based on postal code and whatnot. So that's super exciting. Looking forward to getting on that. Right now, that's just taking a seat because I've got month end, quarter end, and I've got a really important email that I'm working on, uh, and that's next on my to do list. So um, expect to see that in the near future. I think that's about it for today. So thank you again for, man, this was awesome. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight awesome questions. Uh, we'll catch up on that and we'll catch you next week. Okay? Take care everyone. Bye.